what is up you guys so I wanted to start off by showing off the new fairing I got for it I will say that I am presently surprised by how well it is for only $70 and I am enjoying it quite a bit right now the setup for the locking is a little funky it's not the best in the world but uh, I could have also spent a little more time finagling things or uh, really just I, I don't know if it's if you could see or not but where these bolts bolt onto the inside here the tab could just be bent a little more and I could have done that but honestly for $70 I don't really care uh, it probably won't be the last fairing I ever stick on the bike so but it's gonna be the one I'm rocking for quite a while now because I am really liking it today's gonna be the first real test to see if it creates too much wind noise but either way it's working great for my own personal use and I went ahead and patched up the holes in the back from what I found from riding it it did affect the torque um, it didn't affect it a whole lot I thought it was a whole lot but then I uh, patched it up and not horribly too much change but there was a difference in torque and me personally I'll just deal with the quiet exhausts to keep my torque so I will put that out there and at the beginning of a video so that if anybody was curious about the update on it they can kind of at least hear something back from me on it it worked well for sound and it wasn't as bad as doing a straight up delete for the uh, baffle there but honestly if I'm gonna lose a a torque difference that I can actually feel then me personally I just assume put it back on there until I go ahead and get myself the better exhaust I mean I planned on doing it anyways so I guess now I just know that there's definitely no way to even so much is help out a little bit with the sound on the stock exhaust which like I said that's why I said I was testing it out it's a if you don't necessarily care about maybe losing a little bit of torque then man it was definitely worth it uh it didn't ruin it all the way around or anything just like that it's just i could tell the difference whenever it was uh down low so from about 2000 rpms right so uh with how it is now i can drop the bike in second or third gear to around 2000 rpms and the bike will pick up off of its face again but whenever i had the holes drilled back there from about 2000 to 2500 it was a dead zone of just like you could turn the throttle all the way and you just heard the bike get louder and no like it didn't speed up or anything you know like right now well i guess technically right now it's not going to be a good way to example of it sitting about 3000 but hell even it feels like it grabs a lot better even from right there on so i'm gonna go ahead and just chalk it up to that's not gonna work for me it did work in the essence that it gave me more sound without ruining everything but i guess coming from that sportster s having to feel of some pretty nice power i was really enjoying how much power that bike had so i think that taking away from this in any essence when it already felt like it wasn't quite as fast is doing me no good so i for me personally it's just a big personal thing i i thought about it real hard before patching it up because i was like you know is it really that big of a difference i won't know and i could just drill the holes back out if i ever wanted to but i'm not honestly going to do that i'm just going to replace the pipes besides here in the next few months i'll probably be able to replace it anyways and when i stop to think about it a little bit if i just don't be so impatient about it i'll probably be all right so 
I definitely wanted to bring that up. I don't know if I stated where I was going towards the you know beginning of this video. I don't think I did actually. I think I just uh, started talking about the ferry. I'm gonna go down into Stillwater. I was flipping through uh, Google. Well, actually, I was exploring Google Maps. And uh, if you search into the search bar, attractions, you can just, uh, it'll show you all the, like, attractions and stuff that are uh, around your area. And in Stillwater, they had a big old model of Optimus Prime. And I was like, there's no way. And so I knew where I was making my next video. So today, we're heading out to go check out Optimus Prime in Stillwater. It's about an hour away, so it's not too far away. But I figured, hey, this right here is neat. I went on YouTube. That's a pretty nice house. I went on YouTube and I looked it up and there was like, eh, like maybe four or five videos on it. So maybe we can get ours up in the selection so that people will watch it. Or not, who knows. But it is starting off to be a really nice day. I cannot, I almost put on a jacket. I was like, man, should I wear my jacket? And I was sitting there in the sun for a second. And I was like, I know it's gonna get hotter as we go along. So I just decided that I'm just gonna deal with the nipply weather for a little bit, which honestly, it's already <laughs> warmer. So I don't know if it's really gonna be you know cool at all which is perfectly fine by me because as long as it's not fucking 40 degrees out I'm having fun I'm not gonna lie and so far uh, the only thing with this windshield that I have like I'm like finding myself going eh about is the fact that around 50 to 60 miles an hour you get a lot of wind noise but you know at some point in time I just gotta stop being a bitch about it I don't know you know cause like I have this idea in my head that I'm gonna be able to put a wind fairing or a fairing on this fucking bike and it's gonna just like take away all the negatives and only leave me with the positives and I know for a fact that that's not the case even on my uh, Iron 1200, there was quite a bit of intermediate buffeting or just buffeting at odd times. I had it pretty dialed in to where it wasn't that bad, but of course you would still always get buffeting just a little bit and you just get used to it over time and it you kind of just phase it out with like most things in your life. If you deal with it quite often, eventually your brain will turn a blind eye to it just because so i think that the extra little bit of wind noise will just kind of disappear and when i'm listening to music honestly the wind noise ain't even bad and it's not even bad enough to stop me from hearing my cheap 40 dollar bluetooth headset which is what i use actually <laughs> for a um calm system I guess you could say me personally I'm not necessarily talking to anybody well I guess you could say I'm talking to myself and or y'all however you may feel about it but uh, typically that'd be the only people I'm talking to while I'm out on the road so I'm not gonna pretend like I even need the um, microphone in it to work very well but I will say that it works decent for $40 I'm sure with one of the fancier Bluetooth setups, like the Cinnas and stuff like that, they probably got pretty uh, clear audio and stuff. This, it sounds like you're in a wind tunnel while you're riding. The other person will be able to understand you, but you can hear the wind. Like, it's prevalent. And sometimes, if you're moving too fast, you're definitely not even going to be able to uh, and, like enjoy the conversation. But if you're just cruising, like what I'm doing right now, and you need something, uh, maybe you want your girl on back to be able to talk to you, maybe uh, you want the homie who's on his other bike to talk to you, y'all can both grab these headsets, and they're pretty cheap. 
And as long as you uh, do some due diligence whenever picking out a helmet, this is one thing I will say. Uh, I eventually might make a video over helmets. I just am warding off on it because I'm not a real big helmet guy to begin with. But I guess I am now because I love my helmet. But uh, when picking out this helmet versus my LS2 helmet, I noticed that this one has pockets. And there are little circle pockets on the inside that cut into the foam a little bit. And you can place the uh, speakers from your system there. And it makes it to where you don't have to fight for ear space in the ear pockets. And it works out a lot better. And now uh, on my LS2 helmet, the reason why I even bring up those pockets, is it didn't have them on it. It just had space. And uh, I found a way to make it work extremely uncomfortable well not extremely but mm, pretty uncomfortable had to be real finicky about how you put the helmet on and then when i switched over here to the scorpion i found out it had pockets when i ripped out the inside well not ripped out but i, I took out the inside of it and uh, i realized it had pockets there and i was like oh dude and so i set it up and i have never looked back now if I ever go get myself a different helmet in the future, which eventually I probably will, I'm gonna be making sure to check off a list of things on the helmet that come in handy. Another big thing that really comes in handy when dealing with a helmet like that, uh, y'all can't see it, but on this helmet, there's a lock for the visor. Uh, it's just like a little thing at the front of the visor and you just click it and pull up on it and then the whole visor it slides up as normal but the real benefit to the locking part of it is is it keeps you from having to deal with if you have a, like a t-sport fairing you might know you'll get some buffeting and sometimes if you don't have your setup set right that buffeting will open your visor on you or it'll crack it a little bit which i found to be annoying as shit maybe that ls2 helmet was just too cheap but at the same rate this helmet I'm wearing right now was the same price. Actually, if you want to get real into it, I got it for a cheaper price, uh, only because I got some discounts and the, that the uh, helmet was already pretty much the same price as the LS2 Rapid. So I'm more than impressed with this Scorpion helmet. If you're out there and you're like, man, I need a budget helmet and you're trying to pick between brands and you come across this LS2 brand and you have the chance to go with the Scorpion, I would say check out the Scorpion first. You might actually like the Scorpion better. Uh, I would say go and check it out first though. You know, a lot of these places that sell helmets will allow you to try the helmet on and uh, that will solve a lot of your issues right there just being able to test the helmet out by yourself and actually get a feel for it on your head because i know for a fact walking into getting my helmet i didn't know what the hell i was even looking for in a helmet in fact the helmet i'm wearing right now is a size small and i know they all vary a little bit due to head shape and all that other stuff but just for some plain out statistic type stuff right my helmet i'm wearing right now is a small the helmet i picked out by myself without anybody's help was a large and it felt like it fit right but after it broke in oh boy it was bad it was bad so honestly do some research a little bit uh try on a few different helmets when i picked out that helmet the person wasn't a very helpful person and so i didn't pick out a very good helmet i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna mention the business that i went to to get it from because they are local to uh, tulsa and honestly i don't think just because the lady wasn't very helpful with picking out a helmet that it's a bad shop i just think that she didn't really know what she was doing and hey that happens i didn't know what i was doing either but when i went to the harley davidson shop uh route 66 harley davidson that's where i bought this beautiful bike from the people there knew a lot it well the girl there knew a lot of information about the helmets surprisingly and more than i thought that 
<laughs> they would really know. And while I did try on probably like 15 helmets, she got me the right helmet. I mean, by golly, I now I don't feel bad about wearing a helmet at all. And I can't say how much that's changed the riding experience for me because part of the thing I remember being upset about with on the Iron 1200 was the buffing off the windshield and then I think it has something to do with the noise from riding as well. And how did I fix that? I put a helmet on my head, you guys. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how much wind noise a helmet cancels out. Now you're not gonna get away from the wind noise. It's You're never gonna get away from it. You're on a motorcycle, but man, it's nice and if I needed it to be any quieter I could throw in a pair of earbuds or sorry um, ear protectors you know what I mean the little soft squishy ones and throw them in my ears and be fine or I don't think this one necessarily works the best because it's just replacing noise with a different noise but I listen to mouth music all my life anyways so you could just turn your head to some up and you won't hear the noise you'll just hear your music so <laughs> You can also tune it out that way. But I'm going to stop rambling for a minute. It looks like we're already like halfway through my Dan run that I typically do. So I know I've been out here rambling for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and cut back when he has some more interesting stuff. So, y'all may see. I am fighting the wind just a little bit. Holy moly. It feels like I'm sitting on top of a mountain. And the wind has nowhere else but to just push me around. And look at flat Oklahoma. Look at it. Just look at it. Flat. Like your last ex bitch, flatter than ever. This wind out here is getting to be annoying. I've dealt with more <laughs> wind this season of riding so far, and we're not even fully into it, right? Than any time ever so far that I've ridden. Granted, that's only about two years, but still, you would think that. It wouldn't be this bad, I guess. I don't know. Them cows. For you cow people out there. In Oklahoma, you'll find that there is no shortage of uh, cows. Or clouds, I guess, technically. <laughs> it's one thing I really do love, though, is uh, just riding out here in this stuff. To be quite frank, it's really neat just kind of riding through all this shit and whatnot oh my god this road is horrible uh, that's how it, that's how it feels just letting you guys know so we've officially entered the town of Yale I just passed the sign back there first it kind of didn't look like <laughs> this was uh we were rolling up into a town I'm not gonna lie this place seems a little interesting I wonder what the fire people are doing and the fire danger is high today you guys be careful. Look at that. Simple sign pizza. You know you guys, I'm not gonna say uh this don't really look like much. That's a pretty interesting house right there though. There's an old brick that I always talk about. 
Well, I guess I'll come back in still water. I think I just hit the end of this Yale place. It didn't look like there was too much back there. Kind of looked like maybe there was a good place to eat. Maybe we'll have to come back sometime just to check that out. It's not like a barbecue place. But I'll be back. More cows. But more interesting. I kind of like getting these shots of uh, just how flat it is out here, man. I mean, just look at that. It's like a cross out there in the thing. Super flat. All right, you guys. So I believe we're if not in, pretty much entering still water. And I'm pretty sure wherever it is that I am going is coming up. I don't know, relatively soon. Right here. Yep. Welcome to still water. What? Bear. Life's right there. What is that? Well, God down our daily what? Tell you what? Well, there we are. Check this thing out. It's huge. And it's made out of all kinds of parts. I'm not gonna lie guys, that's pretty cool right there. I've never seen anything quite like that. And more impressively, it doesn't look like crap neither. Oh yeah. So if you guys like coming out to see this, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for coming along.